Thank you for the introduction. So, uh, Jan Granlund is uh, my name. I work for Dassault Systems located in, in Sweden. And uh, I'm going to talk about primarily about structural simulations uh, uh, today or th this afternoon. Um, the title is uh, Realistic Simulation Made Easy, which is, uh, well, well let, let's see how that title <laughs> It goes on when we're uh, finished here. So basically, uh, the idea here is uh, what if we would have a robust nonlinear simulation tool? Would it be able to kind of stop having us to make assumptions and guesses and, and actually perform realistic uh, predicting, predictive simulation? Uh, Abacus is. Uh, a very robust, accurate, non-linear solver that, that can take uh, advanced contact capabilities or phenomena into account. It can take uh, large deformations into consideration. We can model ad adhesives and failures and, and uh, large deformations. Uh, if we would have that at hand and uh, have it in one tool that would make uh, all kinds of physics simulations available, wouldn't that make us uh, help us make better products for for uh, uh, harmonizing product life and uh, nature? That's kind of the uh, essence in in the whole systems offering in, in terms of the simulations in, in this context. And the aim, of course, is to to uh, use these tools to allow us to reduce the amount of physical testing in order to save time, money, and uh, of course, improve quality. What we see here are a couple of examples from our, our uh, customers. Uh, on the left-hand side, we see uh, an example from uh, the Japanese company, Mechanical Design and Analysis Corporation, uh, which uh, compares experiments and, and simulation of, of uh, the crushing of, of a can. And on the right hand side, we see a crash dummy uh, for, for vehicle passenger safety, which of course represents uh, different types of, of uh, simulations. So uh, before we go on, uh, just to, to uh, kind of explain some concepts here. We, we talk about Dassault Systems, we talk about Simulia, and we talk about Abacus. So Simulia uh, is uh, not a product or a company, but it's a, it's a brand of Dassault Systems, which is populated by, by products such as Abacus and, and uh, that we will talk about mostly here today. Uh, it also, contains products like EyeSight for process management and optimization, Tosca for shape and topology optimization, and FSA for durability and fatigue. So those are some of the products that you will find on the, under the Simulia brand on, on the Dassault Systems offering. And Dassault Systems is a, is a very large company, way above 20,000 passionate people around uh, the globe. And uh, it's really a purpose-driven company, long-term driven, uh, which uh, have the resources and, and the uh, ambition to invest heavily in R&D for these purposes. So uh, enough of that. Uh, and over to, uh, to uh, some of the focus topics of, of uh, this webinar. Uh, Abacus uh, is uh, on the Simulia brand, the uh, application for structural simulations primarily. And uh, Abacus consists of uh, two solver solvers, Abacus Standard and Abacus Explicit, which uh, both are uh, general purpose finite element solvers. And uh, wrapped around those solvers, we, we have an interactive environment called Abacus CAE, which uh, integrates pre and post processing for uh, the uh, Abacus analysis products. 
Abacus can perform all kinds of uh, simulations ranging from, from basic linear to highly advanced nonlinear multiphysics uh, simulations. Uh, in this diagram, we kind of have the, the expertise of the users on, on the horizontal axis and, and the, the technology sophistication on the right hand side. Typically, you would envision that, that uh, applications would, would, would more or less represent a straight line across this, uh, uh, the, this diagram. Through various kinds of customizations and, and by, by the generality of, of the offering, uh, we, we see that through customizations and scripts, we, we can actually deploy very advanced simulation to, to maybe less uh, experienced users. And uh, through the uh, generality of, of the offering as well, uh, we clearly see that we can manage all kinds of, of different simulations, uh, which makes uh, migrating or shifting around in, in a scale like this is, is very easy. So whenever a simple linear analysis is deemed to be inadequate, we can easily improve on that and add the more complexity as required by, by the, the current circumstances. Uh, Abacus has a, a very strong footprint across almost any industry uh, today. And uh, this is again an evidence of the general, generality of the offering and the capabilities. I won't read out all, all the different areas here, but I'm pretty sure that most of you will, will uh, find that you're active one way or the other in, inside any of these industry segments. Uh, let's uh, talk a little bit more about the uh, products we, we're, we're offering here. Uh, Abacus CE uh, is uh, the graphical user interface. It actually stands for, for Complete Abacus Environment. And uh, it's uh, had a few years uh, now. It was uh, presented in, in 1999. But uh, uh, it is uh, still a very mod modern and well-organized uh, and easy to use system. It kind of borrows the user interface uh, to a large extent from, from modern CAD systems, working with model trees and, and uh, it's customizable. Uh, it offers a, a medium or, or a relatively simple modeling capability, what is kind of moderately complex geometry, we can always discuss, of course, but um, well, but uh, we uh, think that most, uh, many customers already have uh, CAD systems. So uh, we have tried to, to make good CAD interfaces for, for such circumstances, but uh, the geometry can then be, be repaired, it can be modified, and it can be uh, complemented with, with uh, what we call native geometry uh, inside the preprocessor. Uh, once we have uh, created the appropriate geometry uh, for simulation purposes, we need to, to create uh, a mesh of discretization. And, uh, Meshing is powerful and, and flexible. Fully automatic free meshing, that is typically for, for tetrahedral elements, and semi automatic hexahedral meshing. So uh, it requires a little bit more time, but uh, usually it provides better simulation results or cheaper simulation results at the end of the day. The uh, visualization tools are. Uh, Powerful, so so uh, high performance for large models, offering transparency, view cuts, uh, probing, XY plotting, uh, animations, synchronized animations, and uh, so forth. So uh, basically, what most people need for uh, viewing and, and examining the results of the 
simulations. Uh, the application is also uh, customizable and extensible uh, uh, by the use of, of Python. And uh, this scripting capability covers everything from, from sort of automating repetitive or, or tedious ta tasks with, with uh, kind of macros, all the way to, to create full vertical applications which uh, can contain any kind of, of intelligence. We, we uh, can create new user interfaces, dialog boxes, and so forth for, for uh, the user to, to enter the data. And uh, this, is a, this is how we can deploy very advanced uh, simulation to uh, maybe less experienced users simply by providing uh, the intelligence and, and the uh, underlying capabilities and, and just exposing the user to, to the input they need to, to provide. Uh, these are our, this is an, an example on the left-hand side. We see the outer box, other CE. And uh, on the right-hand side, we see customization of a knee simulator. Uh, which we have upgraded, and uh, the user interface, the dialog boxes, and, and so forth is, is uh, customized uh, precisely, exactly for what the user needs to to, to input. Uh, having said that, uh, I'm going to focus a little bit more on on the analysis products in in our offering. So uh, the solver technology uh, is uh, a robust solver, uh, which is designed to, to handle very large model sizes. Uh, it uh, solves fast and, uh, of course, is implemented to scale across multiple cores in, in uh, the current modern HPC environment. Uh, the uh, Code was uh, initially def uh, designed and, and uh, for uh, production use, so, so uh, very high demands on, on quality and, and robustness. Uh, it was presented first in time in 1978. Uh, the explicit solver was uh, was presented in 1992. Um, the last major sort of uh, architectural change was, was made uh, in the early 2000s when, when we went to the current version of, of the file formats and, and uh, Abacus EA and so 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 so, so forth. Uh, these are kind of uh, tough tasks to to uh, adjust to, to to current compute environment, computer environment, and so forth. But we, we're, we're in a good position for, for, for that, I would say. Uh, Abacus offer a very extensive uh, sort of library of engineering material models. Uh, it means that we can model metals, of course, kind of linear elastic uh, metal behavior uh, is, is, is natural. But we can also add uh, non-linearity in terms of, of plasticity, for example. It could be isotropic, it could be anisotropic uh, behaviors. Uh, the behavior can be rate and temperature dependent, uh, which is pertinent, of course, for, for like rubber or plastic materials and, uh, and so forth. Uh, in addition to, to these maybe more conventional engineering materials, we also have uh, materials for modeling of soils and rocks, as well as concrete and, and ceramics and pastes and, and polymers, uh, which uh, actually can, can be very convenient in, in, in many circumstances. 
the uh, library actually contains a number of, of uh, sort of mathematical models which, which uh, can be used in, in almost any kind of, of uh, industry. Just a brief anecdote: some some of those uh, some of the material models for for soils, which will which can include uh, pores pores and, and pore fluids and, and so forth. They actually work very well for for hygiene materials like such as baby diapers and, and uh, so forth. Uh, in addition to uh, to uh, these material models, we, we also offer a, a comprehensive framework for modeling of damage and failure, uh, which could cover bulk failure of, of uh, the materials uh, as well as uh, uh, adhesives and, and interface layers like delamination of, of uh, composites and uh, so, so, so forth. Typical applications for our customers for for uh, for Abaco standard, uh, where where uh, which is maybe the most widely used uh, solver technology, uh, which can deal with both static and uh, dynamic events, both linear and nonlinear behavior. So these are are some examples where what uh, our customers do with this solver, of course. Stress analysis, uh, maybe what most people think of when we talk about structural analysis, but could be more advanced stuff like uh, what we see here, a clip incitation, quite advanced contact analysis as well as large deformations and, and uh, so forth, sealing simulations, so installation of, of, uh, of a shaft seal and, and deployment of, uh, of external loading, gaskets, uh, could be solder joint fatigue, which would involve uh, thermomechanical loading. Uh, the solver can also deal with uh, acoustics, so uh, noise emission from from tires, for example, uh, or or stuff we can do. Uh, we can also do uh, thermal analysis, of course, and electrical analysis. So what we see down here is actually a uh, one of those fuses on, on your car, which is subjected to, to electrical heating. So um, as a result of the electrical current here, uh, we produce heat and, and uh, combining that with, with some mechanical loading, uh, we, we can we can uh, end up with a failure on, on, on that, kind of that uh, de detail. Uh, and because explicit, uh, that's uh, also a general purpose finite element solver. Uh, it was originally designed for high speed transient dynamic events. It cannot solve the true static uh, equilibrium, so everything will have to be uh, dynamic. Uh, on the other hand, it, it's very robust to, to deal with uh, very transient and nonlinear events, such as uh, impacts crash uh, simulations, blast loading, what we see here is, is an, actually an explosion. And, and this is a part of, of a, a crash structure. It also offers some, some multi physics capabilities uh, like fluid structure interaction. I will uh, come back to that in a short while. Uh, it has also proven to be very effective for or some very non-linear quasi-static events, such as metal rolling or deep drawing or, or blow molding simulations, where it many times can be a more efficient uh, way than the implicit uh, Abaco standard. Uh, both the solvers are, are, uh, have very strong contact capabilities. Contact is a numerically very, very challenging aspect of, of simulations. Um, but we have come a long way in, uh, in helping the user to set up these simulations. So, so most of our users just 
tell the code that we won't contact and, and uh, <clears throat> everything, all the exterior free services will, will, will be automatically turned into contact analysis or contact services. Um, some of the more advanced analysis that, that we can offer uh, involves, uh, for example, uh, history sequences of, of uh, including preloading effects. So uh, let's look at this uh, turbine, for example. If um, this turbine rotates at, at uh, high speed, uh, then uh, the stiffness or, or, or the behavior, the dynamic behavior of this one actually changed as a result of the centrifugal forces acting on the system. So uh, typical loading scenarios for, for uh, sim simulating these are, are to uh, apply the centrifugal loading. This is actually a, a quite simple static procedure to, to spin the turbine to, let's say, 10,000 RPMs. And uh, considering these stresses, we can compute the eigenmodes. And then we could have another step where we would change the centrifugal loading and uh, recompute the eigenmodes. And uh, this usually comes in, in as validation processes for, for rotating objects like this, because we, we really want to avoid uh, resonances here where, where the uh, Rotational speed coincides with, with some multiple of, of uh, some critical eigen frequency. Uh, damage and fracture analysis. Of course, we we normally would like to to avoid having our products to to fail. So, uh, and that's of course. Uh, an obvious st statement. Uh, in some cases, we we uh, we really would like to explore what happens if if there is damage. And, and uh, um, in what we see on the upper right hand ha side here is is, is a is a fresh crack propagation capability. And if you look very carefully on the simulation, you will see that the the crack actually propagates right through the elements. So uh, this kind of capability can be used also to assess damage stability, for example. Uh, and let's say you, you uh, during in inspection, you can maybe find damage or, or a small crack in your product. And the question is, is uh, whether you need to immediately stop using it or, or if there is some, some kind of uh, Time operation time left in in in, in the particular product with a particular amount of or damage. The so damage kind of uh, stability can be part of this assessment. Uh, what we see on the middle here is the delamination modeling for 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 a composite, and on the bottom side is, uh, we see progressive damage of fiber and fourth composites. In many of these cases, the two lost animations here. The energy dissipation as a result of, of the damage are part of the functional behavior of, of this product. So this is actually uh, uh, the subframe of of, uh, of the seat, I believe, in, in a helicopter. So in the event of, of uh, the sudden crash or, or a mild crash, the, uh, this serves as, as a something to, to mitigate the impact of uh, the pilot and the passengers in, in, in the vessel. So in these cases, damage and fracture are, are actually part of, of, uh, of the behavior of the, the product. Uh, we often do simulation of, of uh, more complex systems as well. So I mentioned that we have powerful contact capabilities. Contact can, however, be quite expensive to, to, to solve. So on a system level, we, we sometimes prefer simplifying some of these joints with, with uh, another abstraction called connector elements. So connector elements can provide like hinges or, or sliders or, or hydraulic cylinders, cylinders and, and so forth uh, in, in, a, in a simpler or numerically cheaper way. 
to to provide for a system or or more almost like multi-body system type of analysis. Yeah. Today we also see our products being being uh, used much more in in uh, kind of the real environment, which uh, typically means that we need to take more than one physical field into to consideration. Uh, so, uh, and in this context, the multi-physics capabilities come comes handy. So, for example, thermal st stress analysis could could uh, uh, is a very common combination. So, where, where we have a temperature field that uh, through thermal expansion we will will uh, deform and, and uh, introduce additional set of stresses in the structure. Uh, in this particular case, we we like a brake system. Uh, it's actually a fully coupled system, so the friction in itself will, will generate the heat, and the heat will will uh, through thermal expansion influence the uh, distribution of the contact stress. So we, we need to to solve the full, fully coupled system. Uh, similar things could be said about resistance spot welding, uh, yield heating for for uh, induction uh, uh, induction warming and, and uh, heating and, and so forth. Uh, fluid structural interaction is another common uh, phenomenon. Uh, a lot of these we 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 can do uh, entirely within abacus. In other cases, we have to 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 uh, engage uh, an external s solver. But um, some of these uh, fluid structure interactions uh, that we, we see over here, like uh, tire hydro planning, uh, paste squeeze from, from, from a tube, whatever, toothpaste or, or cheese or whatever you have in it, uh, splashing water, th this could be done uh, entirely inside uh, Abacus Explicit. Uh, another advanced technology that I will actually will talk more about in, in, in a few minutes are concerns with um, additive manufacturing, where uh, we have over the last, let's say, five, six years uh, developed uh, some uh, Special technology that is required for, for this type of simulation to, to progressively activate elements representing the, the way an AM process actually gradually layer by layer adds material. Uh, we introduce heat like a laser uh, beam that, that uh, warms very locally uh, the powder, for example. And uh, as we gradually grow the, the product, uh, we constantly are, are evolving what are, what are known as free surfaces, which uh, require the application of appropriate boundary conditions and, and, uh, and so forth. Um, before I come back to, to, to some examples, uh, let's just touch on, on some of the other products on, on the uh, Simulia brand. Uh, EyeSight is, is uh, kind of our, our uh, process integration and design optimization tool. So um, you can think of EyeSight as being a, a software robot. It can run Abacus applications, uh, but it can also run other applications such as uh, Excel or your CAD system or, or yeah, almost any other product uh, on the market. Uh, and uh, it can be used to, uh, whenever there is a process where you run one application, pass data into to a second application, and, and uh, pass output to a third application, and so forth. Whenever there is such process, it can be automated by, by eyesight. And once we have an automated process, we, we can, of course, leverage the, uh, let's say, optimization algorithms and so forth, which is built into to, to this application. Um, so basically, eyesight will allow you to, to uh, 
get rid of, of uh, manual disjoint process where, where you do a number of uh, isolated processes and, and pass data, exchange files and, uh, and so forth, and, and uh, run that in, in an automatic fashion. Uh, we uh, also combining Abacus with, with uh, Tosca, we can also provide for non-parametric optimization. So uh, Tosca technology offers uh, topology optimization, which uh, really means that you can you can uh, uh, provide a design space, um, and then you can you can have the ap application to remove material which which experiences low stresses. So that it's for the say uh, material which doesn't really help in, in carrying the, the the load can be removed. Uh, sizing uh, means that we, we, we can do a similar thing, but we operate on, on sheet metals thicknesses. Uh, shape optimization means that uh, we can fine tune stresses around like fillets or radius to, to uh, further reduce the fatigue stress in, in those areas. Uh, similar to, to topology, structural topology optimization, there is an application for fluid topology optimization and, and that can um, provide a design space, uh, come up with a shape that minimizes, uh, for example, the pressure drops and, uh, and so forth. Speed optimization uh, is uh, something that can uh, shift through in entering ribs, for example, shift your eigenfrequency content to, to be outside of, of the critical excitation frequencies. Uh, FE safe uh, allow you, your your structural simulations to be to be uh, used for uh, durability as, uh, assessment. So we take the stress or strain field from, from our simulation and, and uh, combining that with, with uh, some kind of load signal uh, and uh, as such we can come up with, with the fatigue life of, of your product and uh, qualify it for, for the, the requirement of, of the life that we may have on, on our product. Uh, I will not talk so much more about these details uh, uh, today, uh, but I actually will uh, return to my initial promise here to, to touch on a little bit how we can make realistic simulation easy. And, and that's a, a phrase which, uh, which, uh, well, I'm not always fully comfortable with that myself. So really, uh, we, uh, as I mentioned initially, we, we really want to, to have confidence in our simulations. We want the com simulations to, to, be, uh, to be predictive in a way that we actually, before we even produce a, a prototype or, or a test, that we can predict the behavior, uh, of course, in order to reduce the number of, of, uh, of prototypes that we build. and. Uh, so forth, and uh, predictive simulation also allows you us to to improve or, or make changes to to even further improve the proper uh, the properties and and, and the, the behavior attributes of our, our products. However, that of course means that we are confident in confident in that our simulation results are are accurate enough for, for, for those purposes. So anyone who, who, who is kind of uh, conducting these simulations, uh, you need to, to uh, in, in my mind, you need to, to make sure that you are, you uh, have enough confidence or, or that you're actually doing the, the right thing. So I guess everyone have heard the, the phrase like garbage in, garbage out, and, and that's uh, certainly true. 
So, um, of course, we need to, to question ourselves, what is the purpose of, of doing the simulation? And, and uh, uh, of course, we, we, we uh, 20 years ago, we, we were kind of happy that we could replicate something that, that we have seen. But uh, actually, where we really want to predict uh, and as such improve the pro product performance. And uh, of course, the engineer who, who uh, is performing this simulation, we need to understand the physics that we simulate. And, and uh, uh, we also need to, to sort of have the appropriate mathematical models, such as, for example, material models and, and, and the data for it. And uh, we need to have some understanding of the numerical methods, uh, like the finite element method, or uh, that is the main, main topic of today, uh, in order to have some idea well, on what we're doing. And then, of course, all of these simulations uh, are also bound to, to having some kind of uh, assumptions on loads and, and boundary conditions, which uh, could be more or less kind of uh, idealizations of, of, uh, of, of the actual uh, conditions here. And uh, these kind of statements, uh, of course, uh, are, are growing to become much more complex uh, as uh, our simulation system grows much more complex. In particular, when we talk about multi-physics simulations and, and, and so forth. So um, still a, a little word of caution here is to, to, to uh, progress slowly and, and, and make sure that you are, you are confident with, with, uh, with what you get. And I will just give a couple, two examples actually here on, on how such verifications um, can be done. And uh, in some cases, uh, we can actually compare with, with an analytical solution. So. Uh, Everyone who, who might have read a book on, on, on the finite element simulation or structural simulation may, may probably have seen examples where we operate on cantilever beams. Uh, and, and there's a good reason for it. And, and uh, obviously, there are, are lots of, of uh, analytical solutions that can be, be derived for, for that kind of structures. And uh, so, uh, that's a good, good example. So if we consider just a simple cantilever beam, uh, I'll select it to, to, to start with, with looking at, at the eigenfrequency of, of, of that one. So you can go and find any book and uh, find formulas for, for, for the eigenfrequency of, of a cantilever beam. Uh, we would need to have uh, the density Kind of the, the cross-section properties, the Young's modulus, and the length, of course, of, of the beam. Uh, there are some fancy di uh, differential equations uh, that we can solve to come up with these solutions. But uh, the, the first mode typically looks uh, something like this. So uh, just just take a couple of minutes to 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 view how how we would uh, actually proceed to to make such verification example. So uh, what we see here is uh, the creation of, of uh, basically a solid representation of, of this beam structure. So, so uh, we make something which is has the length of two meters, operating in NASA units here, the height here of 0.1 meter, and uh, extrude that in 20 centimeters. So, so basically, this represents a, uh, some kind of beam-like structure, even though it's relatively thick for, for, for that. Uh, we need some material properties. Uh, yeah, I happen to, to select steel in, in, in this case. Uh, I need some, some density. I need my Young's modulus. Uh, we, we need some, some Poisson's ratio to, to complete that. And uh, we need to associate 
the material the properties with, with the, the, the geometry. Seems as a cumbersome process here, but it's actually very rare that we only have one, one part in, in, in our, our simulation here. So I instantiate my, my part in, in uh, the uh, simulation space here. I, I rotate it to get the Z axis in the vertical direction, just for, for convenience. I create a frequency step in, in uh, Abacus, and, and uh, I ask Abacus to, to compute high eigenvalues. Uh, we uh, then progress to, to uh, what we call the, the load module, where we can apply boundary conditions. So uh, I apply a fixed boundary condition to, to one of my ends. And nothing more is actually required for, for producing the uh, eigenfrequency. Uh, we need to put the mesh on, on uh, the geometry, select the size of, of, of the elements. And uh, this again comes in, in, in uh, some of the understanding for, for, for the engineer. To, to There are many different kinds of, of uh, elements here. Typically, they come in, in first and, and uh, second order, order elements. Uh, for uh, frequency analysis, we, we, it's generally known that second order elements provide better results. Uh, once I created the mesh, I can then create a, a simulation job, which uh, and then could, could execute on, on, on my machine. And once it's completed, uh, we could uh, view, 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 view the results. So uh, what it tells us is, is really that uh, it predicts the eigenfrequency to be 20 point 95, 96, which is, I think, sufficiently close to the analytical solution given the fact that there are some, some non-ideal approximations in, in this particular example. So this, of course, can serve as, as, a, as a way of, of uh, uh, making sure that I have enough elements, correct type of, of elements, and so forth. Uh, the next step would maybe be to, to put a, a distributed load on, onto the cantilever beam. You can go to, to a handbook and find, find the analytical solutions for that. It's about 11.4 millimeters. And, and uh, putting a, a, an evenly distributed load here, we, we predict like 11.3. So, so uh, given the relatively coarse mesh, that's, that's pretty fine. So, so. Uh, there are a number of other examples where, where, where we could, could proceed like this to, to, to become comfortable with, with our solution. Uh, however, once we start to add large deformations, plasticity, and so forth, it will become more complex and not necessarily as easy to, to, to uh, validate, but it's a good starting point. So uh, going to the completely opposite end of the, of the scale, uh, I, I have uh, chosen a, a, a powder bed print simulation uh, benchmark that, that uh, was actually provided by the National Institutes of Standards and Technology as a, as a benchmark a couple of years ago, which um, uh, means that the typical for additive manufacturing processes is that we, we print a, a small test specimen for, for validating the, the process and, and so forth. And those can also serve as good uh, validation examples. So, so these are typ typically known as, as kind of bridge examples. So what we see here is, is, uh, is uh, the structure, which is, which is printed. And uh, after the printing process, uh, we uh, <clears throat> release or cut this part the structure and, and uh, leave this one sitting on, on, on the bit plate. And then we can measure 
how much uh, displacements because of residual stresses as a result of the printing process. We can see, see here, this is the undeformed uh, state, and, and, and this is the deformed state after, uh, after the release from the build plate. And um, these measurements can, can then be, be compared to, 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 to the simulation data in, in, in a case like this. Of course, this is an example of, of, of a simulation which, uh, which requires a lot more information about uh, the material properties and so forth. And in this case, uh, the printer uh, EOS, which provided the, the benchmark and the printed samples, uh, provided with, with the properties of, of the material as functions of, of temperatures. So we can, we can uh, thermal conductivity specific heat and, and uh, thermal expansion in Young's module and, and so forth are the functions of low temperature ranges because what, what we do in the simulation context here is, is that we, we first solve the uh, process of, of uh, melting the powder following the path of, 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 of the laser uh, as such we compute the thermal history and once we have the thermal history, we, we uh, sequentially run uh, a structural analysis uh, based on the thermal history. And uh, these are examples of, of uh, let's see, we, can, we can zoom in a little bit. So, so what we see here are input to, to this kind of simulation. So this is the pattern of the path of, of, of the laser as it scans. It scans the, the uh, contours a number of times and then, then it's goes across and, and fully covers the, the interior of, of, of the structure. And all this data goes into to, to this simulation. Uh, so what about the results? So uh, in, in this particular case, we, we, uh, we uh, could compare with, with the actual experiment on, 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 on the laboratory. And uh, we're slightly under predicting the, the uh, the uh, deformation, the way the distance, how, how it kind of rises up uh, at, at the release from the build plate. Uh, X-ray scans of, uh, of the structure, so, so these are, are strains measured at, at certain uh, coordinate uh, along the side here. Uh, on the other hand, shows a, a very good good uh, correlation between uh, simulation and, and uh, experiment. So that means that we, we, uh, we uh, are pretty confident that, that, that we have tuned some of the assumptions on thermal boundary conditions and, and how much of the laser energy that goes into the system and so, so forth uh, are correct. And uh, then we could deploy the simulation technique to, to other types of, of uh, geometries and as such predict the amount of distortion and um, the residual stresses that we might see after finishing uh, the, 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 pr the printing process. So some of the data that goes into these are all then the path and process information. We, we then compute the evolving free surfaces and uh, we, we uh, depending on how fine mesh we, we produce and, and uh, time increments and so forth, we, we uh, can demonstrate then that we, we are confident that we can predict the distortions and, and, and the residual stresses of, of the, this, these parts. So uh, getting to, to, to an end here, uh, we, uh, Abacus offers uh, realistic simulation capabilities for all industries and all users. We provide linear and non-linear behavior, uh, sophisticated contact and material modeling and high performance solvers, uh, a modern and easy to use uh, graphical user interface that integrates well with the CAD packages, uh, which can be customized uh, as required. So it's really a single solution for, for all needs and uh, can be a very uh, the most powerful tool I would say in in performing predictive simulations in order to to improve your product performance. So 
thank you for your attention. So any questions, I'll, I'll be glad to, to. Well, thank you, Jan, for a great presentation, uh, as always. Uh, and we have a couple of questions. Um, first one is something you might have heard earlier. That is, uh, what's the difference between ANSYS and Abacus? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's somewhat competing uh, competing products from from different companies. So so uh, it's um, uh, there is a lot of similarities between uh, the basic formulation uh, being used for between Abaco standard and uh, uh, ANSYS. Uh, think. Now, of course, I'm, I'm talking from, from my side that uh, the uh, Abacus was originally designed to to uh, to address nonlinear problems. So uh, I, I think that could be uh, uh, still the case that we we might be stronger on 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 the very nonlinear. Uh, uh, very, the, the, the more nonlinear analyses are, are usually more efficiently handled in, in, in other words, but yeah. Yeah, there are, like you said, I, I, I believe there are the two top um, FEM analysis softwares around, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Another question here is, um, can Abacus calibrate material test data? Yeah, yeah, we have for, uh, for um, in Abacus CAE, we, we uh, provide for, for some tools for calibration of data. So for example, uh, for example, uh, hyperelastic uh, test data, Plastoplastic test data uh, can can be consumed and and, and uh, converted or calibrated in, into to uh, best fit for for. It doesn't cover all uh, different kinds of material properties, but uh, but uh, some of the most commonly used. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. So next one is, um, can you import models made in Inventor? Uh, not simulation models as far as I know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but CAD models, 3D? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure from the top of my head what, what, what format Inventor use and 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 we 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 do take most of the common CAD formats. So anything that which you can export in 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 also like step format, for example, I think is the most probably the most uh, uh, most general CAD format for for the importing into. To, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I, I I believe that most three D CAD software will um, you'll be able to get it in the step format, right? Yeah, yeah. So so, so we have direct interfaces to to some of the, like uh, Proe and and uh, SolidWorks and and Katia and, and uh, but not as far as I can remember to to Inventor now. So I I, I would recommend try to step format. Okay, so last question here is, uh, can wear materials due to friction slash slipping be modeled? Yeah, we have some capability to, to, to model the wear of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of material. Uh, so, so that will have to be done through uh, a user subroutine extension. So, so uh, on a surface, we can, uh, as a function of, of, of uh, state like contact stresses, uh, slipping, friction, and, and, and uh, other, other variables, we, we, we can 
we can predict the rate of where or actually grow it could be negative where will actually be growing material and and, and that would uh, then change the boundary of, of, of our element set and, and uh, at the same time it will remesh the underlying layer of element to to, to uh, accommodate the change of, of geometry so, so in, in some circumstances we, we can do that yeah okay Good, great. Um, that was the last question I had right now. If you have any further questions, please send them to info at alphasoft.com and uh, we'll have Jan or someone from his team helping us if, if you can't solve it on our own. And thank you, Jan, for a great presentation and to being with us again. Really appreciate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you.